In today's video, we're taking a moment to talk about the silent pilot killer, carbon monoxide poisoning. And we'll talk with Dan Bass, a pilot who passed out from it in flight and lived to tell the tale. All this coming up. So I went flying recently with my friend John. We went and grabbed a $100 hamburger and I piloted from the right seat on the way home. After our flight, he was looking at the plane from a distance and said, hey, there's a hole in your exhaust. Now, I hadn't seen it before, but he's been around airplanes a lot more than I have, so we went in for a closer look. And sure enough, there was a small hole. He told me it was this white stuff that was around it that was the dead giveaway. This made me think, well, if there's a hole here, could there be a hole somewhere else in the system? And what if I get carbon monoxide poisoning? This threw me back to when I was shooting for In the Hangar and listening to a story from Dan Bass, who happened to survive passing out from carbon monoxide in his flight. Luckily, his plane landed or rather crashed in a field and he technically walked away from it. Which brings me to the point of this video, to bring awareness to carbon monoxide poisoning and what you can do about it. Often referred to as the silent pilot killer, carbon monoxide poisoning is a form of hypoxia, which is a deficiency of oxygen in the bloodstream. But it's worse than that. Carbon monoxide is more easily absorbed by the bloodstream than oxygen itself, 200 times more actually, and it tends to hold on to it. So even small amounts of it in the cabin can cause problems, especially at higher altitudes. What kind of problems? Well, to talk us through it, I've invited Dan Bass himself to tell us what he went through on his flight. Okay guys, we're here with Dan Bass and he's gonna talk to us a little bit about how it feels to have CO poisoning. Um, again, he is the miracle that somehow landed his plane <laughs> while he was poisoned and unconscious. Dan, that's a remarkable feat. And why don't you go ahead and tell us uh, about those symptoms? Yeah, thanks for having me here, Carl. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about the day and, and what I was feeling. Yeah. So the day was, uh, I, had to, I had to do a quick business trip uh, up to Thunder Bay from my hometown of Winona. And it was going to be three flights for the day. It was direct to Thunder Bay and then from Thunder Bay to Duluth, Minnesota to clear back into U.S. Customs and then Duluth back home. Okay. Um, so I got an early start in the morning and I took off and started heading up for Thunder Bay. And at this time, I... I started to get a real slight headache at the very end of the flight, okay. um, just like the last 10 minutes or so. Um, then I, I didn't have any coffee yet that morning, and I always do, so I didn't notice the symptom being related to CO. I attributed it to, to being a, a caffeine headache. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so the, the headache, though, would go away, and it would come, and it after I got in, got in the Thunder Bay, it wasn't consistent and it didn't really get a lot worse. Um, but once I got to Thunder Bay, I had a I had a feeling of anxiety when I got on my airplane and I attributed that with, with, with um, a little uh, confusion to clearing into the Canadian Customs. I thought I did it wrong. Oh yeah, that'd be stressful uh, for anyone. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it should be anyway. And uh, I got out of my airplane into the fresh air and I got an immediate headache and a really strong one. Uh, I cleared into customs and got back in my plane to head back to home on the last leg. And things started happening really quick there. I had the anxiety feeling again. I had the headache feeling. I wasn't really sure what was going on. Uh, and then I, I departed for Winona and just a, uh, about four and a half minutes after departure, I lost consciousness. Wow. Um, now. Up until this point, like I said, the symptoms, they would come and they go. They weren't linear. Um, I had a couple different symptoms. A lot of the symptoms I didn't experience while I was in the airplane. The only time I really did was on the morning flight, the last 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't, have, I didn't have any symptoms until I got out of the airplane on the second flight. Uh, and then I did have that headache when I got back in the airplane. But uh, at that point, my cognitive ability was diminished greatly. Um, and I think that's important to know. The more, when, when you start having symptoms and they're gonna be random and different, your cognitive ability will diminish. And then also I think it's natural to try to figure out what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. And it's really easy to, to link those to other things. You know, with the headache, I thought I had caffeine. I thought I had anxiety from clearing into customs. The overall part of the day, I'm feeling unwell. Uh, I had a, my daughter was sick 
So I kind of thought maybe I got what she got. Uh, it was really easy to just, justify the symptoms. Guys, if you want to hear the whole story from Dan Bass, check the description for a link to the YouTube channel Taking Off. I promise it's worth your time. Now the FAA created this little symptoms diagram for us to look at and remember they're typical symptoms so your response to carbon monoxide will vary. Like in Dan's case, the symptoms came and went, but it'll typically start with a headache which should be your first sign to see if you can figure out if something's going on so you can take corrective action. Especially if the headache gets worse or you start to feel drowsy which may mean it's too late. So what can we do to protect ourselves? I mean it's called the silent killer for a reason. So having the right tools to alert you if something is going on is really important. A lot of pilots put one of these in their plane. It's an easy and expensive solution, but you have to keep up on them, replace them regularly, and make sure that they're not expired. But after talking with Dan, we asked him what he suggests. All right, Dan, that was a fantastic story. Thank you for telling us about those symptoms because they, they truly are important to understand what's going on. Um, but I know that you use something now inside of the airplane to help you understand the CO inside of it. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I use um, a, it's a sensor con portable mm -hmm. CO detector. Um, there's lots of great detectors on the market. My main reason is for supporting these guys is just the support they've given the pilot community, the quality of the product, it's real good. Um, and what the, the portables afford you in terms of safety, not only prevention, uh, or not only the catastrophic prevention of it you know but uh, the fact that you can use it to troubleshoot and diagnose problems well before you end up in a field in southern minnesota in the middle of the night um all right dan well thank you for uh joining us today and telling us a little bit about co poisoning we greatly appreciate it yeah thank you carl so Dan is a really great guy and really wants to help spread the word about carbon monoxide poisoning. So he connected us with SensorCon and they ended up sending us one of their brand new detectors. And wow, I'm actually really impressed with this and it's a lot better than one of these. Because it's a digital carbon monoxide detector, it's helpful in more ways than just one. Not only do you get to see what you're currently exposed to, you can also see if there's a change in the conditions. It also provides a visual and audible alert if the carbon monoxide gets too high. Using it is simple too. It has this nice clip to attach it to things, but I opted to get their mount. Even though it's designed to be fixed to the dash, I was able to use its standard AMPS hole pattern to attach it to this ram mount plate, so I could take it with me in any plane I go flying in. Using it like this allows me to put it in my line of sight too, adding it to my scan of the gauges. To show you how it works, I took this little guy outside and tested it out with my car. Sitting here without the car on, you can see that we're at zero parts per million. Then, with the car running, you can see that it starts to register some carbon monoxide. And because it's highly concentrated, the alarm starts to go off quickly. For comparison, I wanted to show you guys how one of these dots work, and honestly, I expected it to react real quickly, but nothing happened. So I went back inside and checked the directions and realized, my goodness, this takes a long time to react. After finding that out, I knew this is exactly what I wanted to fly with personally. Now the audible alarm on it is a little bit weak, and I'm not sure I'd be able to hear it while I'm flying the plane, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to put it right in front of me. But they do offer a model that vibrates if you wanted to attach it to your belt or your harness. If you want to pick up a detector from SensorCon, make sure to check the links we have down in the description and grab the code that they gave us to get 20% off your purchase, which is super awesome of them considering they're not sponsoring this video at all. Also, I put a link down there to learn more about carbon monoxide poisoning that we highly recommend you check out. All right, guys, that's everything we think you need to know about CO. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below. Also, head on over to our channel page to see some of our other great content. While you're there, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of what we're doing next. As always, share aviation wherever you can, and we'll see you in the next one.